Hello, my name is James. I'm going to walk you through configuring Cache Footprint to share its data among multiple terminals within your store. The first piece is to designate which computer do you want to use as your main computer or quote unquote server. You can use an actual server if you want to, that's fine. Um, but we just need to make sure that we're currently on, so right now, you're at the computer that is your server or main computer. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is click on the Windows Start button. Go to All Programs, Microsoft SQL Server 2008 R2, and Configuration Tools. Now we're going to run the SQL Server Configuration Manager. Yes, we want to allow this to run. And here's a list of all the services, the SQL Server services on your computer. If you've gone through the How to Install Cache Footprint video on YouTube, you will have SQL Server Cache Footprint. You'll probably only have three services, the SQL Server, the Agent for Cache Footprint, and then the SQL Server Browser. If you did not follow that guide, or you didn't follow the install guide on our website from the Downloads page, then you probably have SQL Server SQL Express and the agent for SQL Express and then SQL Server Browser. That's fine, doesn't really matter. The thing that we are concerned about is the SQL Server Browser service. This needs to be running and it needs to be set to automatic for start mode. Let's go ahead and right click on the browser, go to Properties, select the Service tab and make sure the start mode is automatic. Click Apply and then go back to the Logon tab and click Start. Once that's complete, click OK. You should now have the SQL Server browser should be running and it should be set to automatic. Automatic tells the system to start up this service when the computer starts and it's going to allow the other terminals to see the server running so it can use it and share its data. All right, the next thing to do is set up the network configuration for our cache footprint protocol. So if you click on cache footprint, you'll see TCP IP listed on the right hand side. Make sure that's set to automatic or enabled. Go ahead and double click on it. Change enabled to yes. And then hit apply. If that was previously set to enabled, you're okay, sit tight. Um, but for those who had it as disabled and now it's enabled, you're going to get this warning message that we need to restart the server instance. So go ahead and click OK. And then we're going to hit OK on the, the TCP IP properties window. Let's go back to SQL Server Services. And we're going to select our server instance, right click on it, and select restart. Okay, now that our server instance is restarted, we can go back to the protocol for cache footprint, double click on TCP IP again, and now let's go to the IP addresses tab. When we restarted that service, it assigned it a new IP address, or a new port. So let's capture that port number, go ahead and copy that to your clipboard, and then click cancel. If you've already had it set to enable, make sure you copy this down so we have it for opening up the port in the firewall. All right, so let's go ahead and click Cancel. And you can close the Configuration Manager. Now that we have that port copied to our clipboard, let's go ahead and configure the firewall settings right away. So click on the Start button, go to Control Panel, System and Security, Windows Firewall. On the left-hand side, you'll see Advanced Settings, Go ahead and click on that. And now we have the advanced security window. Click on inbound rules. And we're going to add two new rules. So on the right hand side here, click new rule. And it's going to be a port. Click next. And go ahead and paste in that port number. Click Next. We're going to allow the connection. Next. This is going to allow any computers on your domain, 
whether you're connected to a private network or a public network. If you want to uncheck public or private or domain, uh, public is kind of the big one. If you have this on a laptop and you connect to coffee shops or anything like that, you may want to uncheck public. Uh, but for the sake of our installation, we're assuming we're within the same business, so we can leave all these checked and hit next. Now let's give it a name. I typically use SQL Server dash cache footprint. Since the port is tied to that specific server instance, that's why I'm putting cache footprint in there, and I'm designating it as a TCP IP. And hit finish. And there you'll see it up on the top here listed. There's another port we need to open as well, which is a UDP port. So let's click on New Rule, go to Port, Next. This one's going to be a UDP port. And the port is 1434. That's the default port for uh, SQL Server. Click Next. Allow the connection. We're going to leave all these checked for our demonstration. Hit Next. And SQL Server Cache Footprint UDP. And hit Finish. That port allows remote computers to see the SQL Server instance on the network. Without that, it's going to send the, the request to the server and it's going to bounce back and not it's not going to say, hey, okay, well, here's the list of servers. So that's what that does. So this one allows you to connect. This one allows you to see the services running. Go ahead and close the firewall security window, and you can close the control panel as well. The final step for this server configuration is to make sure that the server is or allows remote connections. So let's click on the Windows Start button, All Programs, Microsoft SQL Server 2008 R2, SQL Server Management Studio. Okay, so we should now see our server name listed. If not, hit the drop down, go to Browse for more. Click on the Network Servers tab. And expand the database engine node, and you should see your server listed. It may be your computer name slash SQL Express, like this. Select your instance, hit OK, and then we're going to leave Windows Authentication mode and click Connect. All right, right click on the, the top node there where it has the computer name slash cache footprint or computer name slash SQL Express. Go down to Properties, Security, and then make sure the server authentication is set to SQL Server and Windows Authentication mode. That will allow you to connect remotely without a password and it will also allow the client computers to connect to Cache Footprint as well. Hit OK. And it's telling us we need to restart the server again. That's OK. Hit OK. Now we're going to right click on the server instance one more time and go down to Restart. Yes, we want to run this program. And yes, we want to restart that instance. Okay, and you'll see the little green arrow up in there when it's fully restarted. Now we want to make sure the password is set properly for the system administrator account. You can create new logins here if you want to do that. Um, you can Google uh, SQL Server Logins to create your own login. But the, for the sake of this video, we'll just use the SA account. Right click on SA, go to Properties, and the password should be um, it can be whatever you want it to be, but I recommend using the password that's in the install guide. It's C4 dollar sign H capital F O zero capital P R one N seven. I misspelled it again. C4 dollar sign H capital F O zero T capital P, R, 1, N, 7, and OK. All right, now that we have that set, let's do a quick check to make sure it's set up properly. Click on New Query. It's going to bring up a little blank window. Right-click in that window. Go to Connection, 
change connection. The server should already be filled in. Let's change the authentication to SQL Server authentication. Username is SA and type in the password. C4 dollar sign H capital F O zero T capital P R one N seven. And our connection is configured properly. Down here in the bottom it will say connected. Go ahead and close SQL Server Management Studio. That's it for the server. So now let's go to a client and we're going to set that up. So on your client computer, go ahead and install Cache Footprint only. You don't need to install the server, just Cache Footprint. And then let's go to the Windows Start button, All Programs, Cache Footprint Point of Sale, and Change Server Connection. Since the server already exists on the main computer or server, we don't need to reinstall, we just need to connect to it from a remote computer. So starting Cache Footprint and selecting Basic, all that stuff, we don't need to do that. We just need to change the connection and we should be in good shape. So let's go ahead and click the ellipsis button to the right. Select our server, hit OK. The database should be cache footprint. The authentication type should be SQL Server authentication. Username, SA. And the password will be cache footprint. C4 dollar sign H F capital F. O zero T capital P R one and seven and connect. There we go. Server connection configuration changed. Hit OK. And then fire up cache footprint on the client computer. It should come right to the login screen. That's all there is to configuring cache footprint to share data among multiple terminals. If you have any questions, give us a call at 855 Lot Hill or shoot us an email at product.support at lothill.com. Thank you.